In this video, I will give you 15 of the most common IELTS speaking questions with some awesome answers. Hello, it's Keith from the Keith Speaking Academy and the YouTube channel English Speaking Success. So in today's lesson, how exciting, I'm going to give you 15 of probably the most common questions we get in IELTS speaking, particularly part one. But these are also just very common questions in everyday life. So great questions to know, to, to know the answer for, right? For each question, I'll give you my answer just to give you a flavor of a possible answer. And I'll also mark in bold some of the key vocabulary or grammar or pronunciation to help you learn and improve. Now, if you are preparing for IELTS, please do not learn and copy these answers. That is not going to help you. Trust me. Learn the vocabulary, learn the phrases and the chunks, and then use those to make your own original answer, right? Be flexible. Be like a yoga teacher. That's how to do it. All right, let's get going. So the first question, what do you do? And this is asking about your everyday activity, right? Whether you work or you study or if you're a homemaker. So let me give you an answer for each one of those, okay? The first one about work. What do you do? I work as a teacher, actually, in a local secondary school. Um, I teach English and I'm responsible for developing the new curriculum there. Okay, so notice... Whatever your job, you can say, I work as a teacher, as a plumber. I work as a. Think of it as a chunk. I work as a. Sounds Portuguese, right? I work as a. I work as a. I work as a teacher. Great. Notice, notice also when you're talking about your duties, what you have to do. I'm responsible for something, but the for becomes f. I'm responsible for this, for that, for, for this. I'm responsible for that. Okay, next one. Let's imagine I'm a student. What do you do? <laughs> well, I'm a full-time student at university and I'm studying French and Japanese. And after graduation, I really want to get into translating. I think it's a fascinating field. Okay, here... An interesting phrasal verb, to get into something, is means to get involved in a field of work or an activity. So it's to get into plus the noun. So you can get into translating, get into writing, get into politics, get into law, any of those, right? Get into. Yeah, I want to get into teaching or whatever you want to do. Next one for a homemaker. Let's do it. What do you do? I am a stay at home parent actually. Um, so I look after the kids, get them ready for school and that. And I also do some volunteering work in our local community. Okay, a useful phrase, right? A stay at home parent. You can have a stay at home dad, stay at home parent. Um, stay at home mum. Um, so this is somebody who basically looks after the home rather than going out to work. So they're not paid to go out and work. I know being a homemaker, you're working, but it's a different kind of work, right? You're working in the home. The other one, other kind of work was volunteering work. Um, so volunteering work is like to work for a charity to give your time for free. So you can help out in the local community, right? To do some volunteering work. Great, let's move on. Question number two, do you like your job? Yes, I like it most of the time. I mean, I really enjoy seeing my students learn and make progress, but I must admit the hours are long and work often eats into my personal time. 
Okay. Notice the word stress here. I said, I like it most of the time. When we stress a word like this, it's often as a contrast. So here I'm contrasting not all of the time, but most of the time. So use the word stress to really convey your meaning. And we also kind of slow down. I like it most of the time. Can you see that? Another expression, I must admit. So when you're giving an idea and then you want to make a contrast and say, yeah, but there's this. It's a bit like, but to be honest, and then you give a negative side. So I like this, but I must admit, this is not so good. The hours are long, right? And the final phrasal verb, which is interesting, to eat into. You know to eat, but to eat into is to take up or to use up time or resources or maybe money, profit. So here, work eats into my free time, right? It's like it's eating away. Sometimes I want to study, but my family eats into my study time, right? Eats into. Lovely. Next question. So question number three is, what job would you like to do in the future? Here we go. Um, I haven't really thought about that very much. Um, maybe a pilot. I think it would be exciting to learn how to fly, uh, not to mention to have a chance to travel around the world. Okay. Great acting, Keith. <laughs> I haven't really thought about that. This is one of those time fillers. It's a bit like, that's a tricky question. Mm, let me think. I haven't really thought about that. Um, now, I said it would be exciting because it's a conditional, right? What would you like to do? It would be exciting. But notice the contraction. It would be, it'd be, it'd be. Uh, it's a great chunk. Think of the sound as a chunk, right? It'd be, it'd be. Try. It'd be. It'd be exciting. It'd be funny. It'd be interesting and so on, right? Um, not to mention, now we use this. It's a bit like saying, and also, or, and what's more, and on top of that, when you, you want to emphasize something you've said and kind of give it more importance. So this is good. And also this would be great, right? So learning to fly would be good. Not to mention to have a chance to travel around the world. Not to mention. Perfect. Great. Let's move on. The next question is a study question. Um, and it could come in two ways. It could either be... What do you study? Or what are you studying at the moment? They both mean the same, right? Really? Okay, let's go. Right now, I'm doing a master's degree in accounting. Um, it's a part-time degree as I'm working as well. So it's always a balancing act between work and study, um, but I can just about manage it. Okay. So this is a true case. I mean, for me, studying and working at the same time, doing a master's degree whilst you're working, it's a balancing act. It's a lovely idiom to use. Um, it literally means you're balancing two activities, right? Or two requirements or two demands. So it's a balancing act between work and study. And at the end, the expression, I, I can just about manage it. So just about do something means it's kind of almost or nearly, but it's when you're successful. It doesn't mean nearly, but I didn't. It means nearly, and yes, I succeeded, but not very easily. Just about. I just about managed to do it. Next question. Question number five. What kind of accommodation do you live in? Accommodation, right? Asking about your house, your flat, what kind of accommodation? Here we go. Um, actually, I live in a flat and it's slap bang in the centre of town. Um, it's a basic two bedroom apartment with a nice kitchen, one bathroom. Um, 
And yeah, it has all the main mod cons. Okay. So um, slap bang in the center means right, right in the center of town. Slap bang in the center. At the end, I talked about all the main mod cons. It has all the mod cons. This actually stands for modern conveniences, referring to heating, hot water, air condition, television, things that make your life more comfortable. All the mod cons. Okay, next question. Question number six. Um, which part of your home do you like most? I'd have to say the lounge. Um, there's a really comfy sofa there, and that's where I chill out and spend most of my downtime, as well as watch TV with my family. Okay, great. Comfy, by the way, just means comfortable. To chill out means to relax. That's where I chill out and spend my downtime. Downtime can be for people or machines. Um, so when something's not working, that's the downtime. So the time that you're not working, basically your free time is your downtime. Down time. <laughs> That's it. Next question. What do you do in your free time? Well, actually, I'm a bit of a film buff, so I watch lots of movies. Um, but apart from that, I also like to go down the gym and work out on the treadmill and to do some weights there whenever I have free time. Okay, great. So here I'm a film buff. Now a buff is a, a fan or an expert in something. Um, we don't use this with everything, but I think more, more typically we can say a film buff, a movie buff, a history buff, a computer buff, maybe a car buff. So you like something and you have a lot of knowledge about it. Interesting expression here to link my phrases. But apart from that, now this actually means in addition to, as well as. So I watch movies as well, I go to the gym. But apart from that, I also go to the gym. Talking about the gym, you can say workout to do some exercise. Um, on the treadmill is that thing that you run on and fall on the ground because it's automatic. Hopefully not. And do some weights, right? You can do some weights. Excellent. Good. Next. Right. It's time for some downtime to chill out on my comfy, <laughs> comfy chair. Now you'll notice, right, probably, um, that all these questions are more IELTS speaking part one, and I'm presenting the language through model answers, okay? Um, now, if you're interested in more model answers and you want to develop your speaking skills with tips about vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, have you thought about taking an online course? Have you thought about taking my online course for IELTS speaking. It's called, <laughs> it's called IELTS speaking success, get a band seven plus gold. And the gold course gives you over a hundred model answers, not just part one, but part two and part three. And you also get a chance to practice with other students in small groups online, face to face, practice speaking in our breakout rooms. Um, great opportunity. There are daily sessions. So you can actually practice your answers, practice developing your speaking, practice being flexible, as well as meeting people from around the world. A great cultural experience. You're basically becoming internationally mobile without leaving your home. It's great. In addition, there's a private group. It's on Facebook at the moment where you can chat and connect with other people and with myself as well. Apart from that, in addition to that, um, I've also noticed quite a few students are not preparing IELTS, but I think they're loving the course because it's developing their speaking skills. So although there's lots of strategy for the exam for IELTS, the vast majority is developing your speaking skills. So you've got the confidence to speak and to face the examiner um, with confidence. Um, and it does that because it's focused on developing your natural conversational English. 
After all, that's what IELTS tests, right? Your ability to use natural spoken English. And that's what the course does. So if you're interested, want to find out more, check out the link in the description below. Right now, let's get back into those 15 most common questions. And it's number, number eight. Question number eight. Do you prefer to spend time with friends or family? This is one of those either or questions and you're like, both. <laughs> Here we go. That's hard to say. Um, I enjoy spending time with both, to tell you the truth. I'd probably say overall, I strive to spend more time with my family. And I guess that means, yeah, sometimes I do neglect my friends. Okay. So here, yeah, to tell you the truth is just, it's a filler. And it means to be honest or speaking frankly. Um, here, of course, the answer is both. To strive means to try hard to do something. I strive to spend time with family. Neglect here means to, to ignore or not pay attention to. So I do neglect my friends. I neglect my friends. Okay, great. Question number nine. What's your morning routine? Well, I aim to get up at seven o'clock. Uh, then I go for a brisk walk um, every morning without fail. Then I get back. I tend to have breakfast on my own because everyone's asleep. Um, and after that, I start work. Okay. So here, um, to go for a brisk walk, to go for a walk, um, brisk just means fast or quick, a brisk walk without fail. It, it means every day, like religiously, come rain, come shine, without fail. And then when we're talking about routines, we often say, I typically do this, I tend to do this, I usually do this. So I tend to have breakfast on my own. That means without anybody else. There are two ways to say this, on my own or by myself. Just remember, on my own has a O and a O, on own, on my own. That's the way to remember because some people confuse by my own, no, by myself, on my own. Get it? Great. Next question. The next one's all about health and fitness. How do you stay fit and healthy? As I mentioned before, I like to work out at the gym. Um, on top of that, I do take care with what I eat. So I like to cook healthy food at home, um, plenty of vegetables. We eat meat in moderation and, and I try to eat a piece of fruit every day. Okay, good. Notice you don't need lots of complicated vocabulary, right? I mean, this is quite a straightforward question to answer. If it's a question that you've already answered before in the test, then just say, as I mentioned before, but don't repeat the same answer. Develop the answer in more detail or take a different path. As I mentioned before, I like to work on top of that and then develop. I said to take care with what I eat. To take care of is to look after, but to take care with something is to pay attention to and be careful with, right? When you're saying goodbye to somebody, we often say bye, take care, right? Pay attention to yourself, look after yourself. What else? To eat meat in moderation, to do something in moderation, not too much, not too little, just medium. So, you should eat meat in moderation, drink alcohol in moderation. That's what the government tells us. So let's pay attention. <laughs> Great. Let's move on. Here we go. Question number 11. Did you do any sports as a child? Yes, um, we used to play football at school. Um, that was the main sport. Uh, although I also played cricket in the summer. 
but I wasn't very good at it at all. Um, I never really got the hang of it. So questions in the past, there are different ways you can talk about the past, right? We used to play football. Notice it's used to, used to. We used to play football. Simple past, I also played cricket um, in this case. And the nice expression, to get the hang of something, to get the hang of it, is to learn how to do something. Often something kind of technical or some kind of technique. So to get the hang of driving, I got the hang of skiing or of water skiing, that kind of thing. Next question. What kind of music do you like? Ooh, all sorts, to be honest. Um, I used to be really into jazz, but nowadays I tend to listen to more classical music. Um, I find it good for studying and relaxing, and I often put some on in the background when I'm working. Okay, so kinds, what kind of something? If you like different kinds of music or sport, you can just say all sorts. All sorts means all kinds. So there are two ways of answering. I said that I used to be into jazz, but nowadays I tend to. So you can contrast the past and the present. Yeah. What's interesting here is this, this expression, I find it. It's nothing to do with finding your money or your keys. It means I think it is. I find it interesting. I think it's interesting. I find it good for studying. I think it's good for studying. It's a really nice, natural, conversational way of saying I think or I think it is something. I find it good for studying. Next question. Weather. <laughs> a British conversation wouldn't be complete without weather. What's your favourite kind of weather? Well... I actually like cold weather and I love it when it snows. Um, so long as I'm wrapped up warm, I love to go out in the snow. And if my daughter's up for it, we will go and make a snowman. <laughs> That's my answer, right. I love it when it snows. Do you remember we just looked at, I find it. So this use of it is very common in, in conversational English. I love it when something happens. Learn that chunk. I love it when. I love it when. I love it when you say that. I love it when you do that. I love it when it rains. Really useful expression, right? I love it when it snows. Um, I talked about being wrapped up warm. Wrap up has many different meanings, but wrap up warm means to put on some warm clothing, right? Maybe your jacket, hat, scarf, gloves, etc. Finally, to be up for something. It's a great phrasal verb. To be up for something means you are ready and willing to do something. Um, are you up for dinner tonight? Yes, I'm up for dinner. I'm ready and willing. Um, if my daughter is up for it, we will make a snowman so that it is making a snowman. Uh, and hopefully she says, yes, I'm up for making a snowman. I'm up for it. Up for it. Great expression. Next question. This one's all about traveling. Which city would you like to visit in future? Well, there are so many, right? But if I had to choose one, I'd say Lima in Peru um, and maybe one or two other neighboring cities. I've never been to South America, but I've seen so many breathtaking pictures of Peru. Um, I think that would be my top choice. Okay, so this is a would question. So it's kind of conditional, hypothetical. Which city would you like? Um, do you like my acting? Ooh, if I had to choose one. <laughs> but even in natural conversation, right, we use this, right? Somebody says, well, you know, what's... What's your favourite? Um, what's your favourite sport? Well, I don't know. I mean, if I had to choose one, I'd say football. So it it is very natural, conversational. Um, 
I just realised I was acting a bit when I gave my answer. Neighbouring cities. Neighbouring means nearby. So a neighbour, somebody who lives next door. But neighbouring, as an adjective, means nearby, a neighbouring city. Um, and finally, again, notice that that would be my top choice, my number one choice. That would be, you can naturally say, that would be. Get that chunk or that sound. That would be. That would be. Be. That'd be. That'd be my top choice. Great. Next question. Are clothes important to you? If I'm going to be honest, not really. Um, I don't think I'm fashion conscious at all. I mean, for me, clothes are just, well, something practical. So long as I look neat and tidy, then that's fine. Um, you know, I don't pay much attention to coordinating colours or wearing the latest style. Okay, now there's lots of vocabulary here, right? Fashion conscious, to be aware of fashion, coordinating colours, matching colours, wearing the latest style, the latest fashion. But what's more interesting are the other little pieces of language. Um, if I'm going to be honest, Right, which basically, to be honest, but you can make it bigger. If I'm going to be honest, um, to tell you the truth, right? I don't think I'm fascist conscious. I, I, I don't think I'm fashion conscious at all. When we use at all, it's after a negative and it emphasizes the negative, right? I'm not happy at all, right? Means I'm very, very sad. Um, I don't like it at all, at all, at all. It's really useful to emphasize the negative, right? So I'm not fashion conscious at all, okay? The other one is a nice binomial, neat and tidy, neat and tidy. It's a common, we, we put these words together, so it's a collocation, but it's called a binomial, it's A and B, neat and tidy, can you say? Neat and tidy. Good. Very nice. Great. Okay, so I hope you got, you know, some really interesting ideas there for 15 of the most common questions that you may get in IELTS speaking and probably in everyday life, right? These are the kind of questions we need to know how to answer. I hope you've got some interesting vocabulary, some useful tips on pronunciation. Listen, if you want to carry on practicing, um, I do have a PDF for free of all of these questions and answers and language. You can just get it in the description. Click on the link below and you can get that and practice. And do remember, I was thinking about this, especially in IELTS Speaking Part 1, when it comes to vocabulary, think about conversational vocabulary. It's often not about the complex, fancy vocabulary um, about a particular topic, although if that comes to mind, use it. But often it's about the simple things, but the natural spoken English. Things like, you know, I love it when, or I find it interesting, I, I don't like it at all, or I'm up for it. This kind of language is what makes you sound natural and become a more, let's say, a confident speaker. But it takes time, right? Build up, take all of this language, build it up over time, practice using it. Um, it does take time and practice. So be patient, my friend, but also keep practicing. Practice, get the right study method. I mean, one that works for you and, you know, you're going to get better and better and become a confident speaker of English. Great. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, have a fantastic rest of the day and maybe I'll see you in the next video. Oh, remember to subscribe, by the way. <laughs> Take care, my friend. All the best now. Bye-bye.